Aloha everyone, welcome to today's video. As some of you may know, I moved to Maui in 2005 and left for the Big Island in 2019 and that's where I am living presently. So the current situation on Maui since August 8th when the fires started until now sort of watching the disaster um, reveal itself even um, after the fires has really been concerning and I want to feel like I could help some of you out there and so Matt and I have been looking into a lot of uh, things regarding the laws in the county of Maui and in the state of Hawaii and I wanted to share them with you here with this short script that I've come up with and I will also share links in the description that um, pertain directly to this uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you now. So I'm focusing on property rights and legal considerations following the tragic Lahaina wildfires. If you've been affected by this disaster, I think that this video aims to guide you through the complex landscape of your rights. So number one, uh, constitutional rights. Um, let's start with the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which protects against the taking of private property without just compensation. However, emergencies often grant the government broader powers for public safety, which might limit individual property rights. Okay, number two, Hawaii state law. In Hawaii, the revised statutes Title X plays a significant role. This title grants emergency powers to state officials. Should you feel that the state has overreached, filing a notice of claim at both the state and county levels is crucial. Links to those documents are in the description. Number three, county ordinances. If you're in Lahaina, also take a close look at Maui County laws. These local ordinances can contain vital details on evacuation and re-entry protocols particularly in cases where warning systems like sirens were not used. Number four, public mismanagement. Were there mistakes in handling the emergency? If so, you may have grounds for negligence or misconduct. Here, documentation is your best friend. Collect all evidence, communications, photos, eyewitness accounts, and don't hesitate to enlist the help of friends and family in this effort. Number five, due process and the Fourth Amendment. Being barred from your property for an extended amount of time may be a due process violation under the Fifth Amendment. Also, concerns regarding unlawful searches or seizures can invoke Fourth Amendment rights, although these are often secondary to emergency, emergency response measures. Last one here, number six, legal recourse. As for next steps, file, notice it, file formal notices of claim against the state and county bodies involved. If immediate access to your property is needed, consider a preliminary injunction or a temporary restraining order as specified in Hawaii's Rule 65 of Civil Procedure. So finally, these are complicated issues for all of us and legal advice is strongly recommended. I understand that navigating these procedures is intimidating and especially during trying times. But remember that you do not have to go it alone. Fortunately, family, friends can offer invaluable, invaluable support. And we're all in this together. Thank you so much for watching. This video is just the beginning of a informational series that Matt and I are going to be trying to put together through my channel and I definitely want your feedback and I think that maybe you can also help find documents that I might not be able to have found so anything that you can pitch in would be great um, and please leave your questions and concerns in the comments and stay safe take care and please subscribe to get more of this information and I hope to see you again in the next video. Mahalo.